Hi, I'm Steve from Oasis and we're wrapping up this week's devotionals by looking at 2 Kings chapter 22 and 23. I do encourage you to read it through uh, later. And it's a story of uh, Josiah and he was one of Judah's greatest kings. It actually says this about him in chapter 23. Before him, there was no king like him who turned to the Lord with all his heart and with all his soul and with all his might, according to all the law of Moses, nor did any like him arise after him. That is quite a statement. There's a lot of awes there. There was something that set Josiah's reign apart. Often when summarizing the, the reign of good kings, uh, it says uh, in, in 2 Kings, uh, nevertheless, the high places were not removed. The people still sacrificed in the high places. And that was the wrong place for sacrifices to make. That was disobedient disobedience to God and, and sadly some of those fact sacrifices were even to uh, other gods but Josiah was different. Uh, he, he did what the other even good kings uh, neglected not because he was a, a better person but because somehow he, he had a more intense uh, personal uh, encounter with, uh, with God uh, throughout uh, his life and uh, his experience and the resulting transformation of Judah and even parts of Israel during his reign are in some ways quite revival-like. I don't know about you but I love reading about revivals and uh, one of my favourite books is Great Revivals by Colin Whitaker. It's quite uh, an old book I'm uh, afraid but he defines revival in this way. He says, by revival, we mean those special seasons of divine visitation when the Holy Spirit quickens and stirs the slumbering church of God. Believers are set ablaze for Christ and the power of God is so manifest in prevailing prayer and anointed preaching of the gospel that the most hardened and skeptical unbelievers are brought under great conviction of sin leading in turn to genuine repentance and saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And different revivals may have certain distinctive features, but there are consistent themes, and we see many of them in Josiah's story. Uh, the poor guy didn't have the greatest of starts. Uh, both his father and his grandfather were bad kings. And uh, he arrived on the throne at the tender age of uh, eight years old. So that must have been a, an incredibly challenging uh, start for him. Uh, but by the grace of God, uh, there are some characteristics of his life that are quite revival-like. There was a growing God consciousness uh, in his life. We see that from the age of 16, uh, he started to seek God and by the age of 20 he was beginning to implement some reforms in, in the nation in terms of the spiritual life of the nation. Then there came a, a deep conviction of sin, particularly the sin of the nation in backsliding from God and, and with it a sense of God's impending uh, judgment. And that came as a result of the, the process of restoring the temple and they found the book of the law probably the first five books of the the old testament and it was reading that that brought josiah under a tremendous conviction then there was a looking to god for rescue and uh, he sent others to consult a prophetess in the nation looking for for help for god's way through and following that, there was, there was such a thorough turning away from every vestige of idol worship. He went through the, the temple. He went through the high places that I mentioned earlier. He went through the priesthood with a, a fine uh, tooth comb. There was a, a deep cleansing of what had been in place for generations, but had been neglected by all previous kings. And then coupled with that, there was a thorough turning 
to God. The temple was restored and with it right worship. There was an honoring of God's word. And then he restored the festival of the Passover that had been neglected for, for many years. And, uh, and that brought with it to the nation a great sense of celebration and freedom and forgiveness. And you know, we need thousands in our day and generation to experience what Josiah did. But with the glorious New Testament clarity, we want thousands to see that there is a heavenly father who wants us to find our way back to him. We want people to see that there's an obedient son in Jesus Christ who came from the father as the perfect Passover uh, lamb uh, to rescue us from our sin and from God's righteous uh, judgment that should really rightly fall on all of us. He came to rescue us from all of that. And then to see too, we want thousands to see that there's a powerful Holy Spirit who, who bursts in us. The kind of things that happened to Josiah, a God consciousness, a conviction of sin, uh, a trust in Jesus, a thorough turning from idols in our lives and, uh, and an assurance of forgiveness and of being a beloved child. And uh, the UK has experienced revival uh, a number of times in the past. And uh, I just want to remind you of one of them. Just want to read a very short extract from Colin Whitaker's book, and it's uh, about the revival that took place in the Hebrides in 1949. And uh, let me just read this to you. It says, when Duncan and his friends gathered at the church later in the morning, the place was crowded. A stream of buses came from every part of the island, yet no one could discover who had told them to come. A butcher in his van brought seven men from a distance of 17 miles, all seven were gloriously converted. Now the revival was underway. The Spirit of God was at work. All over the church, men and women were crying for mercy. Campbell pronounced the benediction and almost all left the chapel. Suddenly, a young man began to pray. He was so burdened for the souls of his friends that he prayed for almost three quarters of an hour. During this time, the people returned to the church, joined by many others until there were twice as many outside as inside. In some amazing way, the people gathered from Stornoway and Ness and different parishes. It was 4 a.m. the following morning before Duncan pronounced the benediction for a second time. Even then, he was still unable to go home to bed. As he was leaving the church, a messenger told him, Mr. Campbell, people are gathered at the police station from the other end of the parish. They are in great spiritual distress. Can anyone here come along and pray with them? Campbell went, and what a sight met him. Under the still, starlit sky, he found men and women on the road, others by the side of a cottage, and some behind a peat stack, all crying to God for mercy. The revival had come. What a, an amazing account. I would love to read uh, more to you. Do please read them yourself. You know, the tragedy of Josiah's story was that the day he died, the nation backslid again. It would appear that although many embraced the reforms in the nation, their hearts hadn't changed like Josiah's. Will you join me and many others in asking God for a fresh and lasting revival in our own hearts, uh, in our church, in our city, and in our nation. Let's keep asking God for it. God bless you. Have a good day.